We're here with Mary Milligan, a Lyon County recorder. Good to see you, Mary. We see you periodically in our in our business, and we're here to just kind of get your uh, perspective. Tell us about your your position and how long you've been doing it. Well, I am Mary Milligan. I've been uh, in this office for 33 years, and mm -hmm. um, we've seen a lot of changes and uh, a lot of good and bad changes. And we are about to begin our budget process in a few weeks. And that's uh, a hard time for us right now. So. And in, in terms of your role at the county, that budget deals with staff in the recorder's office, is that? Yes. yes. And how many staff do you have here? I have five, including myself. I did have seven a few years ago when everything was rolling along and we were really doing well in 05, 06, 07 in those areas, in that those years. And um, we've all had to cut people. So right. I've lost two people since the downturn of everything has right. happened. Uh, 33 years, uh, how would you rank the last two years on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of your your how you deal with the, the uh, what your role is in the county in terms of the state of the econ uh, economy in Lyon County, the one being the worst and ten being the best. Yeah, uh, geez. as far as the um, the budget part of our job, uh, it's about a three. Uh, we just are not getting the revenues, um, as Josh Fuller would probably tell you, uh, to do the best. I mean, we're doing the best job we can with what we have. Right. And so we have relied heavily on technology to help us do that in lieu of, of any more people. And I think we've kept the level because we've gotten on the website. You can now get our documents online um, to a certain point. Um, and uh, as far as my my people, I think we just, we get compliments all the time on how well it is to come in, how good they feel when they come into our office and we can help them. And we try to help everybody as, as well as we can um, with the personnel that we have. Um, and even like for mining, uh, which seems to be the hottest topic right now, we get a lot of people coming in looking at our plat maps to see where areas have been located or not. Because you do record the mining We do record the mining locations. We record deeds. We record the deeds of trust. We record your marriages if you get married. And um, we keep a, the newspapers. We have two newspapers that we keep. That's part of our record. In fact, our newspapers go back to 1874. Oh, so you retain the uh, newspaper do. records. Mm -hmm. That's part well. of the record. And we wanted to uh, scan those in they are falling apart yes and the old um, microfilm that we had done uh, actually the library had a, a bunch of uh, our newspapers sent out to a place in Utah and so we would send people to the library for the old ones because when you turn the pages you you ev damage eventually it. damage the paper and your oil on your fingers damages the paper and it was made out of junk paper even in the old days. So you cannot actually restore that and put it through the restoration process that we've done on the other books. So they have to just be rescanned carefully and we've had to kind of quit that project because of the lack of funds. Budget constraints. Yes. Now you, you have a unique perspective, a window on the county, let's say, because you see uh, real estate transactions and particularly now uh, as we were discussing earlier, foreclosures, yes. and that's been a pretty, uh, pretty uh, severe uh, time frame in the last three years, you'd say. Yes, I um, got some information off our computer. Um, in 2009, we recorded 1,458 defaults, and on that mortgage. doesn't mean they all went through the whole process, but a majority of them probably did, and had to sell at a tax sale. Yes. That's the beginning of your your process to then you lose it for tax or for the lack of payment of your mortgage. 1,400 default, defaults and they're defaulting on their mortgage. Payments. Right, right. So that was 09. In 2010, it went down a little bit to 1,360. 
And then the legislature passed a bill that said you need to put more information. So they made the lenders require an affidavit record at the time of defaults. Well, that really stopped things right there. So in 2011, we only had 770 defaults. Only yeah. 700. Yeah, it's just it, It's crazy. down, but that... Now, yeah. in, in better times, what was what was the oh, default rate? It was uh, very minimal. Yeah. Really, we hardly saw defaults. And if we did, then a few, uh, a month or two later, they give you a chance to catch up. Right. Then we'd see the rescission to the default, and they'd be all okay. But we hardly ever see that now, where they're rescinding the default and letting you go on, because you've made your payments up. Because probably they go people all the way just through. don't, right. can't make the payments. Right. Yeah. Now, you, you probably have familiarity with other areas of Nevada or uh, regional, or do you, you follow the statistics? What, how would you say where Lyon County is in the, Boy, in the scale I, of things? You know, the, a lot of, a lot of uh, publications are saying it's got one of the highest foreclosure rates. Based on your experience, would you say that's probably? It probably does. We, even with our sales tax, we are like a bedroom community to everybody shops in Washoe County or Carson City or Douglas County. And even buying your, your gas in Lyon County is a huge deal. Yes. Because you get the gas tax. I know it's all dumped in a big pot at the state and then they divvy it up. These uh, Distribute it to the yes. counties. Um, but the more you shop in your own county, um, the better it is for our county. But we do see firmly people probably shopping in Washoe more, um, Carson City. So then people who are defaulting probably moved and rent in those other big cities instead of going and staying here and trying to put it out. I, I don't know how our population is doing right now, but um, I think Douglas and Carson and Washoe are probably doing better than we are. Yeah. Even Churchill, I think, is doing better. Right. Uh, what, what other kind of uh, things does the recorder's office do that give you a perspective on how, what the state of the county is economically and socially? Oh, God. Do you do marriage licenses? Or? We do, but very few. Yeah. We just haven't ever been a big uh, place to come and get married. Lovelock, because of the name. They, a lot of people really? go to Pershing <laughs> County, yes. Um, but I mean, if somebody purchases a house, you do we all do the recording see that. of the deeds. Yes, and stuff we like do that. see that. And um, all of our, you know, the sales have gone down. The assessor had to redistribute and, and cut. 25 to 50 percent off of their values um, so I think it's kind of leveled off I'm hoping at this point that the sales and the we have to see when your deed comes through we have to go in the assessors files and see if it's uh, close to wherever they say that your house is worth and if it's within the range that ta Department of Taxation gives us then we can okay your transfer tax that we have to collect. Right. So watching that, uh, I'm hoping it's leveled off because we just can't go down too much further. We won't even right. have a budget. I My line item for services and supplies is $1,000 for the year. Wow. It used to be about 12000 so. A little different tack here. You're also a lifelong or longtime resident of Lyon County, right? Yes. You live in Yarrington now. Yes, I was uh, born in Carson City and raised in Smith Valley, so. What, on a personal level, and you live in inside the city limits yes, right now. Yes, yeah. You know, part of the, the Yarrington bill is to make sure that Yarrington uh, gets in a share of the property and net proceeds taxes. So as a, as a resident of Yarrington, how do you perceive that as a positive thing? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Because there's so many more things the city could do and wants to do, I know, that they can't do either because of budget constraints. Uh, we'll give them a bigger tax base, won't it? Yes. To be taking that in, and uh, I just don't see a down point to any of but that. But as a resident, then, what has that uh, adversely affected your quality of life here, and, and how would you characterize that in terms of the, the state of the economy? Oh yeah, on the city and being We're a resident. We're losing businesses. Yes, right. Yeah. We, you know, Leslie's is closing, and um, I think it just okay. So we have two new dollar stores, but I think once we get uh, a foothold and we 
we start seeing the mining evolve, you know, you're going to bring in employees, they're going to bring their families, they're going to demand more services, and that's just good for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, the city, I think, will expand. Um, in the good days, when Anaconda was running and Weed Heights was a, a big part of the community, and you just were just dwindling right right now dwindling so you were here during the anaconda days and do you, did you characterize that as a as a positive time i oh, mean yeah. care, oh, tell yeah. me what what that did for the community try to uh, in terms of what you, you know, see I was today young then but i just uh yeah there was just always um things going on there were lots of people here uh good families and lots of kids and and it just was a good structure. We would drive down to from Smith Valley to Urington and drag Maine a couple times and head back to Smith Valley before Mom got out of teaching. Uh, so <laughs> don't put that in there. But uh, anyway, yeah, it just was, uh, I don't remember them being in, we had a bowling alley, we had the golf course, now we don't even have a golf course. Uh, and, and the bowling alley is struggling right now. So, um, it's, so it's the, the businesses in town are not, not. They're not doing well. They're not doing well. No, and and I think we need more people. Right. Um, and we'll have good families coming in. I I don't see it as a bad thing at all. Yeah, and you know you know a lot of people in town. The, 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 is your sense that people would want to live here that grew up here if they had something to do? Oh, I, I'm sure. Yeah, it would bring families back and not. You know, we want to see the younger people stay. There's no reason for them to stay right now. Yeah. There, there's hardly any jobs for them to stay. So, and you know, our seniors are getting old, older, and I'm getting older. Yeah. You know, and we need to bring our young families back and and really get their roots in to make it a better community besides the money. Yeah. I just think that it would make a great place to raise your kids like we raised our kids here so you 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 believe that obviously yes. that this is a great oh, this yeah. could be a great place to live a better place mm -hmm. to live with an economy and and a vibrant right. set of community people living here right with right. A good and more job opportunities which you know creates more business which are more jobs uh, they're just just a real win-win situation I think and uh, we can't afford not to. We can't. Yeah, the the, the picture does not look no. look good absent something happening. Right. Quickly. Right. I I don't see you know, Mr. Clampett out there getting any oil wells yeah. <laughs> in our area. So you know it's got to be our minds and um, and it was a good time back then in the '60s and the '70s when they were here.